Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Young Professionals Network program series, a medical doctor and a YouTube influencer in the pandemic era, an interview with Dr. Ezra Hangjun Jang. My name is Yoon Park, Development Officer at the Korea Society. Since 2011, the society, society is so the Society's Young Professionals Network has been providing young adults a wide platform to connect with other professionals and develop their careers by listening to industry experts, along with enhancing their interest in Korea and the U.S.-Korea relations. And over the past decade, the program has invited speakers from diverse professional backgrounds to share their careers and life experiences. This series is, is made possible by the support from the Young Wonsun Foundation. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker and a moderator. Our speaker tonight is Dr. Ezra Hangjun Jang, a highly regarded doctor of internal medicine working in the New York City. In 1996, Dr. Jang graduated from the esteemed Hanyang University Medical School in Korea, and after three years of military service, he relocated to, to the United States. And shortly after moving to the US, Dr. Zhang enrolled in the New York University in 2002 and graduated with a PhD in chemistry in 2008. Dr. Zhang performed exceptionally well during his time in NYU and received the Golden Dozen Teaching Award in NYU's College of Arts and Science. Dr. Zhang has been practicing medicine over, for over 20 years, with 13 of those years as a certified internist and physicians in New York. During the time, he has garnered a wealth of expertise and knowledge on a variety of medical subjects. In recent years, he has become renowned as a host of the YouTube channel called Dr. Ezra Hangjun Zhang. Uh, since starting his channel in 2019, Dr. Zhang has amassed a significant YouTube following with more than 525,000 subscribers, allowing for the substantial audiences to learn crucial information from each of his videos. And Dr. Zhang's video educates viewers on a wide range of subjects from caffeine intake, exer um, exercise advice, and most, most notably his advice on issues regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. And today's discussion will be moderated by Dr. John Yu, a pediatric dentist of Beam City Dental and, to, and a 2018 graduate of Columbia University College of Dental Medicine, where he received a doctor of dental surgery and a graduate of Duke University, where he received a BS in biology and psychology. Born in the South Korea and moving to US at a young age of four, Dr. Yu has proven himself to be a wonderful success story as a Korean immigrant in the United States. Both Dr. Yu and his brother Eric decided to pursue work in a medical field at a young age, with his brother later becoming a doctor in a gastroenterology. Dr. Yu would develop an interest in dentistry, and while in dental school, he became interested in the specialty of pediatric dentistry. After completing dental school, Dr. Yu pursued dental work in the Jacobi um, Medical Center, practicing pediatric dentistry before finding his current role with the Beam City Dental. Dr. Yu hosted a popular YouTube channel, JBRO, and Dr. John Yu, where he discussed the dental concerns, lifestyle advice, and documents his life as a Korean American dentist in New York. Since starting his YouTube channels in 2019, Dr. Yu has uh, gathered quite a following of over 453,000 subscribers on his both channels. So now, without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Ezra Hangjun Jang and Dr. John Yu to the stage. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Yun, for the uh, gracious invitation and for the uh, stellar introduction. Dr. Chang, a uh, true pleasure to meet you. Let's dive right into it. My pleasure to see you. <laughs> All right. Yes, let's get this party <laughs> I'm started. Very much excited. Uh... All right, here we go. Question number one. We're going to talk about first your background as a medical doctor. Um, 
you graduated from the prestigious Hanyang University Medical School in Korea. Presumably, you could have developed a successful career as a medical doctor in Korea. What made you decide to take on even greater challenges moving to the U.S.? Oh, thank you for that question. Um, I, I always, you know, wanted to uh, answer that question. Um, this is the, uh, the first opportunity uh, by which I can answer this question. From my sophomore year at Hanyang University Medical School, I made the decision to go to U.S. to study abroad right after graduating from the medical school. The main reason was to complete the graduate education course to become a medical scientist in the U.S where basic medicine is most advanced and to pursue a doctorate in both basic science and medicine. Um, after graduating from Hanyang University, um, serving uh, military for three years, I told my mentor, Professor Lee Yong Sung, that uh, I would go to the US and become a doctor of chemistry to develop a new drug to stop aging. When I asked if it was too late to start graduate school again in the US at this late age, when I was 32 years old, Professor Lee said, it's never too late. And he encouraged me to challenge that goal. I'm still very grateful for this professor's encouragement. Um, when I go back to Korea, I would like to meet Professor Lee Yong Sung at least once a year and say hello. Um, so <laughs> that was my brief answer to this journey. After moving to the US uh, for your PhD education and ultimately as a now private practice physician, have you faced any unique challenges as a Korean American doctor? Yes, of course. Um, as a Korean American doctor, I mainly see uh, uh, Korean American patients living in the US. So I had to solve various difficult erotic issues that Korean Americans face in adapting to the United States. So my workload increased. For example, um, in the case of elderly Korean American patients, when they need surgery or special examinations at US hospitals, they are even being taken care of so that they do not experience inconvenience due to language problems or cultural barriers. Um, but I'm very much proud I, I, I'm able to help them out um, because we share our uh, same language and cultures and my uh, elderly uh, Korean American patients appreciate my work so much, even though sometimes it's very much challenging, but um, I'm very happy I can help them out. You're doing an excellent service to our community. And actually you're right down the uh, street from my clinic in, uh, in Bergen County. So uh, many patients know of you and uh, we thank you for your service to um, our residents. I'm going to now give you a uh, classic medical school interview question. And that, that is why medicine? Why did you want to become a doctor? Oh, I'm very grateful for that question too. Um, as I go through my teenage years, um, I have a very serious question on my mind. Um, I was determined to give my whole life to, ans to find the answer to this question. That question was the question of what human beings are. I have a feeling that man is the most mysterious being in the universe. So at first I wanted to be a philosopher. My father, an obstetrician and gynecologist, <laughs> wanted me to succeed him as an OB fellow OBGYN <laughs> doctor but I didn't want to be a doctor because mm. watching my father on the pressure and having surgeries on many critically ill patients, I believed that becoming a doctor was not something I wanted to do. However, one day my father advised me the answer to the question of what human beings you so desperately wanted to understand is that if you study as a doctor, you will know better than philosophers. At that time, I thought this was it. So I decided to become a doctor who researches without seeing patients. After that, um, after attending Hanyang Medical University, and I realized that people eventually die of old age. And I wanted to liberate people from the pain of aging. Most of all, 
I hated the pain of growing old myself. And I have come to truly love human beings. I wanted to do something great for humanity. I wanted to give mankind something great. So after graduation, I decided to go to US, United States, where basic medicine is most developed and become a scientist who makes a new drug to stop aging. To do that, I believe that I had to work hard to, to treat elderly patients to get bigger ideas. So I decided to become a physician in the US after I got PhD in chemistry. Wow. That's, um, we can almost feel that passion in, in your response there. Many times um, these, the why medicine question pinpoints one thing or, oh, you know, stable professional, I wanna help people. It seemed like for you, it was a combination of your drive. And in that journey, you found that being a physician and a researcher was um, two, were two avenues that you could take to merge both passions into one. Would you say that there are many differences in the education in Korea versus the US? How is it different that, being a doctor there versus here? That's a great question. Um, in terms of medical education, um, the American and Korean doctor education systems are almost identical. As an example, the textbooks, which are mainly used in medical schools in the US, are still the same in Korean medical schools. If you are a foreign medical graduate like me, you will have to retake US physician licensing exam. Um, you know, I passed the you know, doctor's license exam in Korea, but um, you know, it's not accepted here in America. So I should have uh, passed the step one, and one, two, three of the US licensing examination. And even if a foreign um, doctor passed all of these, uh, it would be very difficult for a foreign medical graduate to be accepted into residence program in US hospital. Um, if you look at the probability, I may not be correct. It may be very, uh, maybe 10 years ago. There is a saying, um, if 1,000 foreign medical graduates apply, uh, one of them will enter the residence program. So that is extremely competitive. Wow. You've done a remarkable feat. And I want to now ask you about your other ventures as a content creator. Uh, you must have a very busy schedule just by working full time as a physician, balancing your workload in multiple offices. What I find particularly remarkable is that you find a way to balance being not only a full-time physician, but also a highly regarded and productive content creator with over, as Yoon said, half a million subscribers and growing. Uh, what inspires you or what has inspired you to create quality content with everything on your plate? That's a really great question, I appreciate. Um, I love people so much that I want to save them. After I became a doctor, um, I realized uh, that in many cases, the reason a patient's illness becomes serious is not because there are no drugs or because there are not enough doctors who can treat it. In fact, the reason is patients do not take correct information, view their health conditions lightly based on false knowledge or information, and do not follow doctor's instructions. Mm -hmm. So I discovered what patients really need is not to write a lot of prescriptions, mm -hmm. but to make patients understand the medical knowledge they really need. So through my YouTube channel, I decided to share with more people than I could see in my office all day with my knowledge that could dramatically help in their health treatment and prevention. Yeah, I think anyone who watches your content, uh, including my own father <laughs> who introduced me to your channel, can see that you are disseminating accurate information, dispelling myths, and also providing uh, the knowledge that patients need to make uh, informed decisions. So also we thank you for that as well. Uh, when thank first you. starting YouTube, did you expect this magnitude of success and exposure that you have now? Um, when I first started off YouTube, um, when I had less than 10 subscribers, I had no doubts that it grow rapidly in short oh. period of time. Um, because I believe that my hard-earned medical knowledge and insight in the hope of liberating humans from aging is worth more than gold 
that is not mm -hmm. commonly found on the streets. So I, I wanted to give this advice to anyone who wants to be successful with their YouTube. Mm -hmm. First, be sure that information you want to convey through YouTube is more valuable than gold and will benefit <laughs> many people. But you should not doubt its success at all. The mm -hmm. more you love people, the higher your chances of success will be. Wow, I love that. I love that answer. Worth more than gold. It is. And um, as you said, having the confidence to uh, create even when you have fewer than 10, everybody starts at zero, right? Uh, I think that <laughs> confidence is needed at least to give it the best try. And uh, congratulations on, uh, on your accomplishments with your YouTube Thank channel you. as well. Uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic started, uh, you have been creating a lot of content about COVID, vaccines, the latest developments, most recent news. Uh, we all believe that the information and the advice that you share is a tremendous help, as you know, uh, during these challenging times. Uh, would you tell us more about your journey since the pandemic as a doctor slash YouTuber? Uh, how was the feedback from fellow doctors, the public, other medical professionals, reporters about your COVID-19 related postings? Um, in the video I uploaded February 20, 2020, I made bold predictions that even before you know, WHO declared the pandemic and mm -hmm. when there were less than 30 cases of COVID-19 in the US, um, the world will be under economic lockdown due to COVID-19 in very near future, claiming that millions of people would die of this disease. Um, my video I uploaded February 20, 2020 has now been viewed uh, more than 2.3 million people. That went so viral. At the time, a lot of people criticized me for mm -hmm. um, you know, having a virus that was a big deal and giving people unnecessary fear. Uh, however, two months later, my prediction was correct. Mm -hmm. At that time, um, you know, a lot of people hid my warnings and they took uh, necessary cautions. Uh, later on, they thanked me so much uh, for early warnings. Um, so, uh, you know, and later on, um, you know, I told many people to protect themselves and families from this COVID-19 through vaccination. Hmm. And because, you know, anti-vax people criticize me <laughs> as a salesman who made money for a vaccine company uh, mm -hmm. who gave up their, his conscience uh, by recommending dangerous vaccines to people. Uh, you know, uh, I, I got, you know, a lot of negative comments nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, whenever I uh, recommend, you know, vaccines to people, uh, I got attacked, you know, that was a very painful experience uh, mm. because a lot of people, they believe in, you know, uh, conspiracy theories. They right. believe, um, you know, the vaccine company uh, created the viruses and government wants to better control people by, uh, for this, you know, common cold like virus. And however, I, you know, I'm feeling very good about uh, all the, you know, footages and uh, my, uh, you know, lectures on COVID vaccines and even side effects, my uh, experiences. Um, a lot of people, you know, more than 80% of people, they um, positively, um, you know, the commented, you know, uh, my explanations and I got more than 80% of the likes despite a lot of, you know, attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was a miracle. Um, and also I got a lot of interviews, you know, uh, requests from some medias, but actually I refused because you know, even just maintaining my YouTube channel alone is so much, you know, tremendous labor for me. And mm -hmm. while I'm working as a busy doctor and I have to upload and prepare all the lectures, uh, it's so much challenging. So <laughs> I turn down all the requests, you know, interviews mm -hmm. and from some mass media. Follow-up question to that. How would you predict the COVID situation to pan out? I'm not making, I'm not saying that you have to make a definitive uh, prediction, but um, is there something that we accept as norm now, or is this going to pass? Uh, one thing um, I can say to you very clearly, this pandemic will end. Uh, I don't know when, uh, mm. but this pandemic surely end. The region is, um, you know, we have done, you know, mass vaccination campaigns, um, more than 70% in US, you know, fully vaccinated. Uh, a lot of people, you know, got infected uh, because of Omicron. 
we believe maybe half of our New Yorkers already got you know, Omicron infections, even though they weren't aware of it. Uh, they actually uh, have the, uh, the herd immunity. And so coronavirus, they try to mutate to escape uh, our immunity. And so they keep making a new variants uh, to survive. However, uh, when you look at uh, the genomic size of a spike of protein, uh, just like a 200 kilo delta in the size, the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 has its limitations uh, by which you know, this virus can mutate to escape the immunity. Eventually, this coronavirus will exhaust uh, its own the possible mutations. And however, our you know, immune system is amazing we have more biological diversity, which can uh, override, uh, supersede uh, their mutation potentials because their genomic size is very limited. And there will be a one last variant, which I call Armageddon variant. When it Armageddon variant um, become predominant and this pandemic will over. Um, but when good news is that when you are fully vaccinated and you got some Omicron breaks for infections, you're gonna be like a super immune person. Uh, that means your immune system is very resilient. That means the antibodies you created through vaccination and natural infection is so robust and it can cover uh, most of the, uh, the future variants. That's the beauty of the resilience of our immune system. So, um, so having this Omicron situation, I think is kind of a blessing. It may not be a blessing for everybody. Some are immunocompromised, unvaccinated, uh, they may uh, have died of it, but um, still, uh, you know, we did a great, you know, vaccine camp campaign and at least the 70%, you know, US people, they got fully vaccinated, even though, you know, the booster dose, the, the, the rate is not that great. But however, uh, because of Omicron, uh, whether you like or dislike, uh, you know, a lot of people got infected, even after booster dose, some people say, oh, that's the failure, that's the failure. How, how you get the, you know, positive after get boosted. No, that's a blessing. Unless you are immunocompromised, uh, that's the opportunity your immune system uh, will adapt the better uh, to this Omicron. And that uh, diversity created through these breakthrough infections and through vaccination, the so-called hybrid, uh, you know, the system, uh, we'll be able to tackle the future variants. That's the resilience. There is a one nature paper came out. Um, they already uh, made the, uh, um, the, the pseudoviruses uh, in the presence of uh, convalescent Sarah. That means they, they made the virus mutate to escape the immunity. So surprising enough, uh, they already predict the Omicrons and even the variants after the Omicron. We all know about that. So, possible, the last variants, they can mutate uh, the combinations, they can make that, you know, all the genetic real hormone, there's a very limited, there's only one last variant, which I call uh, a variant. variant. Uh, the current vaccine will be almost nullified once this, you know, the mutant uh, come out. However, once, once you get Omicron natural infection and plus uh, vaccinations, and we're gonna be able to the tackle even this, uh, you know, very scary, uh, the last variant, because they already did experiments, uh, someone fully vaccinated and natural infection, their um, you know, utilized antibodies were able to utilize this last variant. So I think that uh, scientific work was so phenomenal. Actually, I'm, uh, I'm preparing uh, the lecture on it. And so I just want to give people hope. Uh, we shouldn't be, uh, you know, the depressed. This, this pandemic not gonna go forever. It's for clear. No pandemic uh, lasted forever. All pandemic ended uh, by just you know, herd immunity through natural infections or vaccinations. But one good news is that um, we have created highly efficient uh, scientific breakthrough mRNA vaccines, which were extremely, extremely successful. The benefits outweigh the you know, risks. Uh, but unfortunately, some people, they think in the reverse way. Uh, mm -hmm. So this pandemic will be end. And um, I think we have to think about the next pandemic, not the SARS-CoV-2, maybe something else. But we have trained ourselves so well through this uh, hardship. 
I think this hardship will be translated into uh, the blessings because we mm -hmm. have developed the, uh, a very powerful mRNA technologies. And now we, we can better handle this pandemic situations. People are trained now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, even though we have lost many, many things, but we have learned a lot actually. So I mm -hmm. hope uh, you know, this is gonna be a very much, you know, uh, reassuring and consoling people um, you know, we have a tremendously uh, uh, distress during this pandemic. During this pandemic, undoubtedly, there have been very challenging times for, as you said, everyone, and also medical professionals like yourself. How do you maintain your positivity, your strength and motivation during these hardships? Uh, whenever I feel a hardship and stressed out, um, I have uh, two strategies. One strategy, uh, to take a complete rest at least once a week. That's very important. I call it Sabbath. I'm not a Jewish person, but um, I think it's very important to take a complete rest at least once a week. Doesn't matter if it's a Sunday or Saturday or Monday, you know, depending on your uh, time schedule. Um, I made a one complete uh, the rest. I stopped all the work I used to do, including, you know, the researching and seeing patients and I did some meditation and reading books and studying, uh, not relevant to our, you know, the main projects. And the second pro uh, the strategy I overcome all the hardship was, the more hardship I have, the harder I study. Um, I think this is really great way. Um, when I was in graduate school and I was so much depressed one day and I was studying really hard and I felt my limitations every day. And whenever I felt some you know, negative feelings and I started even harder to overcome that. So when you are deeply to something, even you don't know you are depressed. <laughs> so I, I was too busy uh, to think of you know, hardship. So, so, so two strategies, one is the uh, one day complete rest. And the second thing is working really hard. <laughs> so Dr. Chung, how do you balance that those the rest days with the ultimately productive days? And now with kids, a family, how do you balance all the work that you're doing plus the quality of time that you spend with your loved ones? Oh, that's why uh, I separated one day from my mm. work days and that's the day for family. And I, I usually took my family to a nice restaurant. So I, uh, you know, go to uh, some, you know, hotels, maybe uh, driving to upstairs. And, and also I'm taking a lot of, you know, family photos and the videos. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, like a seven cameras. <laughs> and I, I, it's like, it's crazy nowadays. I'm, <laughs> this YouTube was inspired me <laughs> doing more, you know, this video editing, and, uh, you know, photo editing. So I, 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 I have created uh, more than a, uh, you know, 200K at the photos and for even, uh, you know, I need at least a 10 gig, you know, how does this drive now? And uh, now family appreciate my work. And they said that, oh, dad, you know, that was me. Uh, you took so many pictures you know, when I was young and they, they all, dad, make sure, you know, you don't lose that all the photos and mm. please, you know, make a backup. And um, so, so, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, now, nowadays I'm very much into some, you know, like a boating on the hottest river and <laughs> I, I have another project. So I just want to do something not mm -hmm. relevant to my <laughs> current project. And so that I, I can, you know, <laughs> reset my brain <laughs> and have, having some quality time with my family. <laughs> That's very sweet and it's very cute. I can just imagine you uh, selfieing, vlogging with your kids. And uh, one question about uh, you as a father, what values do you most emphasize to your children? What is your wish for them? Well, um, actually uh, my son uh, asked a very similar question uh, when he went to Hawaii, uh, he asked me a question. Uh, what was the meaning of life to you, dad? And mm -hmm. I said, the meaning of my life is to find out the meaning of life. And so that means, um, you know, everybody wants to enjoy their lives. Yeah, we have a right to be happy, very important. They have to find out the ways uh, for them to be happy. Uh, the profession they choose uh, should be very much satisf satisfying them. And 
but I always add one thing more. Um, yeah. Find out the way to please the both you and other people. That means uh, when you have fun and having you know great uh, pleasant times, um, if it can be translated into making other people happy as well, that would be really great and success. And you know, my son is very much into some art, you know, art and some. This is quite opposite to uh, my passion <laughs> to science. And I, I, I wanted to become a doctor and it's my research coworker, but he said, Dad, it's not my way. <laughs> okay, I respect you. Mm. I, you have a right to be happy. You know, how can yeah. you be the same as mine? You know, right. you are different human being as well. Uh, but make sure whatever you do, think about the world and people. Uh, you have to take care of the world and the people. You need to love people. That mm. will translate to your happiness as well. So um, giving is more blessed than receiving, you know, that's very uh, old, uh, the proverb. And I truly believe so. And that's why I'm working very hard. And uh, when I see my patients got better, I, 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 I was feeling great about it. That was mm. tremendous happiness that makes my mind very healthier and stronger, even wiser. And Whenever I uh, indulging in just my selfish goals, and I found myself becoming weaker and mm. stupid. And but whenever whenever I do something uh, great, uh, something great for humanity, I feel myself growing stronger and healthier and happier, even younger. Wow, that is an amazing principle. I want to mm. teach this principle to my kids. I don't know how can I make them understand this. <laughs> You know, studying very hard. My, mm. my daughter wants to be a doctor. She's work, studying very hard. And she, even she said that, Dad, I didn't have time to even think about what you are thinking about. I just want to survive this midterm and final time. <laughs> I just want to uh, submit my, you know, the homework right. one time. Yeah, I truly understand that. Yeah. Hopefully they will understand what I taught them someday. I mean, you are a living example of what you just talked about. To have a bigger picture, to reach more than just within and to hopefully um, along the journey, help as many people to laugh, smile and uh, have a better life. So I applaud you for your efforts in that and for your teaching your children as well. Thank you. What words of advice would you give to young people who want to become a doctor, a YouTube creator, both? And what would you say to people who might feel discouraged at times? Well, as I said, um, I think the doctors and YouTubers are very special human beings. Um, it's very similar. Um, what kind of contents you create, you know, I, I just want to uh, bear in mind, uh, my contents can benefit other human beings. That's extremely important. That's why I, I think many, many times if I upload any of the footage, I think about the impact, if that impact may harm, may do harm other people, I, I wouldn't you know, upload it. And as a doctor, number one principle we bear in mind, do not harm to any, you know, do, do not harm to patients. That's very important uh, before you think about uh, making their, them healthier. And that's very important. You know, mm -hmm. the YouTubers and doctors are like um, having responsibilities to make sure what we are doing uh, it's extremely beneficial to other people. Um, doesn't matter if it's entertainment or education or lectures or whatever, even businesses, creating profits. Whatever you do, just think about the impact. Uh, you know, I, I like, you know, Steve Jobs so much and he had a goal. Uh, he wanted to create a beautiful computer which is affordable, you know, to everybody. That's a really great goal, you know, something like, even though he was a like, businessman, but He's very different uh, from other business you know, people. Like he, he's, he's into creating profits, but uh, he, he wanted to do something great for people, making their lives much easier. Mm. Yeah, I think he's one example. Mm. So, um, so my advice to the people who want to be doctors or YouTubers and just bear in mind what you're doing is extremely, extremely beneficial for other human beings. That if you think about that, if you create, if you go that direction, I think 
you're going to be great doctors or um, YouTubers, and you're going to be extremely successful, even if you say the profits, profit will go to you because people will find you extremely valuable. So you're creating natural you know, demand. And so people will follow you. And so even if you ask them to um, give any good words, that they will compliment what you're doing. So we don't need to ask uh, the profit in the beginning, but profit will come to us if we do something right and something great. People will know, mm -hmm. people are very smart. They know what is good, what is bad, what is valuable, what is not valuable. People are very smart. Uh, we human beings are great. I'm so much fascinated by ourselves. We are really great. Humanity is great. Humanity shouldn't be destroyed. We have to preserve and protect humanity. We are so great existence. Mm -hmm. That's very good advice. I think, as you said, um, to become valuable, you have to bring value. And um, instead of the other way around, uh, trying to become valuable without ever offering something, um, the priorities then get mixed up. What are some lessons that you learned uh, from the pandemic that could help us manage a similar crisis in the future? Well, um, I have uh, seen some patients who lost their lives because of COVID-19. And I learned one thing. Um, we need to educate people. That's very important. Um, some people, they just died because of their ignorance. Um, they uh, underestimated the danger of COVID-19. They followed some fake news, uh, wrong information. And I think just saying people, okay, you have to do this or do this. I think we have to make them understand. Uh, rather than just forcing to follow some you know, policies. And I think nowadays, you know, when you look into YouTube, you know, the world, there are so many you know, contents. Whenever I see some contents, that's the full of you know, all the fake news and wrong information. I think that one footage can kill tons of people. That's so unbelievable. So we have to fight you know, this wrong information and of course we have a freedom of speech. However, our freedom shouldn't be misused. Right. Uh, give people false information mm -hmm. that can kill people. That's what I learned from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people, CDC and government, they're working hard making society healthier, but I think uh, they have to put more efforts educating people rather than just you know, throwing data and just follow this or you're gonna get penalties or, or lockdown, whatever. And people will resist without understanding the fact. So that's what I learned. Mm -hmm. It's a really solid point and something that we're dealing with on a daily basis on social media as more and more um, false information, as you're saying, dissemination of myths in a sense, uh, create panic and uh, ultimately can lead to harm. Um, so as you said, creating a reliable source of information so people can obtain uh, information the correct and accurate way is something that I also believe that is uh, our job as uh, trained professionals to do our part. So um, absolutely agree with you on that. Do you have any concluding thoughts or remarks for viewers of Korea Society? Uh, any other insightful life advice as a man wearing many hats. Um, we'd love to hear it. Um, well, I think uh, the Korea society is extremely important for uh, fostering relations between US and Korea. Uh, in New York, we have many, many uh, Korean immigrants and second generation, even third generations uh, keep growing. Um, I think uh, this is really uh, grateful, you know, young professionals uh, get connected uh, to do something great for both countries. And uh, I think Korea Society is so great and I'm very much grateful for what they are doing. And so I will do my best if I can support anyways. And Korea Society is really great. And I love both countries so much, you know, South Korea and USA. Uh, both countries share common 
value system. That is very important, you know. You know, we fought for freedom and we are fighting together. We are working together for mutual benefits. This is really great. And I'm so much honored uh, to be invited for this interview. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me, uh, giving me this opportunity uh, for some fundamental questions. I really appreciate. And thank you so much, Dr. Yu. Um, I truly respect you. And I, I realize that you have different talents that I never imagined to have myself. That's so great. And I, I want to learn something from you, maybe <laughs> when you meet in person. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zhang. On behalf of Korea Society, uh, personally as well, uh, for your insightful experiences, uh, your contribution to not only your community, but also globally now uh, through your platform and your advice on multiple facets. Well, we really appreciate your time. For Thank our you. viewers, Thank you. For our viewers, this interview will be uploaded to the Korea Society's website and YouTube channel. So for those who are interested in watching the video or sharing with your friends, um, please visit the Korea Society's YouTube page. Hope everyone has a great rest of their day, evening, wherever you are, and uh, stay tuned for the next. <laughs>